Welcome to the Make and Design Podcast. I'm your host, Karina Gardner. On this podcast, we're unraveling the everyday joys and dilemmas of design, making, and business. For makers who want to be designers and for designers who are makers, this is your inside scoop to help you grow your business and bring more creativity to your life. Today, we're going to talk about creative thinking. And specifically, I want to talk about five ways that you can generate new ideas. Now, this, there's a story behind this. Um, A little while ago, like a week ago, a little over a week ago, my daughter wanted to go see a anime that was playing in the theater. It is called Bell, B-E-L-L-E. And like normally, I'm kind of like, eh, this is not my jam. I'm probably not going to go see it. Um, but I, I decided we, we wanted to do something as a family. We decided to go see it as a family. So we did. I ended up loving it. I loved the, the visuals. I thought it was phenomenal. Um, and I fell in love with the music and I've been listening to it. It's been stuck in my head for a week. So if you want to go see it, it, it is quite good. Um, and I, I thought to myself, it was so good for me to do this thing that I normally wouldn't do that was out of the box and it has made me think very differently this week. I've been thinking about a lot of design work I've been wanting to do. I've been thinking about how to execute it and while I've been doing that I've been listening to this new music and um, I know that I was stimulated creatively creatively oh my gosh I can't talk you guys <laughs> creatively by this movie and so that's where these five ideas come from because I know that some of you kind of tend to get into ruts or you're designing the same thing over and over again and it's time to change it up so let me help you with that let's talk about these five ways and the first one is gonna be no surprise to you it's going to be change your environment Um, I tend to work, if you're on YouTube, you see me, I tend to work in the spot you are seeing me in. This is my main desk space and I work here. Sometimes just to change things up, I will move my computer, I work on a laptop, into another area of my house. I will take it outside. I will just change up my environment. Now, what happens when I do that? I, I can feel my body do something different. You know, if I'm laying in my bed with my computer, I tend to relax. If I'm sitting in a hammock outside, I find myself feeling gratitude and getting excited about the sunshine. If I've moved to my living room and I've got a kid hanging out with me, that feels different as well. Creative thinking requires you to move. Move your body into a different spot and change that environment, okay? So if you're in a rut, do that. Number two, Um, I want you to listen or see something that is out of your normal range. This is from that story I was just telling before about going to see this movie, Belle. It was out of my range. And because I listened, and that's a stimulant, right? Because I saw another stimulant, I found myself thinking more creatively, getting really excited about out the out of the box ideas and it was all because I got out of my comfort zone and I was listening and I was seeing differently than I had before how often are we doing and seeing and listening to the same things over and over and over again and then we wonder well why am I not thinking creatively why am I not designing creatively It's because we're in a rut and we don't even know it. So change things around a bit. I'm a big believer in habits, so keep your habits. But like change things up a bit so that you can get outside of your comfort zone, okay? Number three is do something outside of your comfort zone. So if you are someone who doesn't move a lot, maybe it's time to go on a walk. If you are someone who has never been to a musical, go go to that musical. Um, if you're someone who's never been to a concert before or listened to a certain type of music before, go try it out. I will say this one is easier because I have teenagers in my house right now. There is something about teenagers, they make you do and behave differently than you normally would. Let me give an example. So my oldest daughter likes out of the box music. She is 
brilliant musically. She plays the harp. She um, taught herself how to play the guitar. We bought her the software. It's called Ableton so that she can write orchestral pieces. It's phenomenal. Like she's just talented and we knew it. Because of this, she also likes different kinds of music, which in no way would I ever listen to. But because she loves this stuff, and I'm in the car with her, I will listen to it with her, okay? I will do things, behave differently. And I know this is a little different than number two. Number two is listen and see differently. This is do differently. And so she and I will go together and do something like go to a concert I normally wouldn't go to because I'm behaving differently because I want to please her. Well, what's, what is the result of that? I myself start creatively thinking differently because I'm outside of my comfort zone and I start pulling from those experiences and I'm like, gosh, it would be so great if I could design this. And I start feeling and getting outside of my box, which is super amazing. Okay. Um, number four, this one is, is, um, a mindset thing and it's especially important because to do good creative thinking, we have to uh, make sure that we are self-aware, okay? And the specific thing I want you to be self-aware about is your self-speak, okay? So what is this? This is the words we tell ourselves every day. Some of you, I know, do not talk nicely to yourselves. You wouldn't talk the way you talk to yourself to anyone you love and yet you talk to yourself that way and I need you to stop speaking in those tones to yourself good creative thinking doesn't have someone um, sitting over them wagging their finger at them and saying don't do this don't do this you're not any good no good creative thinking has someone sitting over you nurturing you saying you can do this there are amazing things you can come up with. You can think outside of the box. You can think differently. You can do this, okay? That's what a good mentor is going to do with you. And you are in the back of your head telling yourself all these negative things that you can't do it, that you're an imposter, that you're not good enough. And if you're not self-aware of that self-speak, then creative thinking is very, very difficult, okay? So I need you to step back a little bit and pay attention to that self-speak. So the fifth thing is, if it seems uncomfortable, seems difficult, whatever the creative thinking or idea is, it is probably the right thing this one is the hardest I know for myself as well I'll come up I'll do this creative t- thinking I'm generating ideas okay and I will suddenly come up with an idea and I feel very uncomfortable with it like I don't want to do it 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 seems really hard almost always that's the best idea right that is the best idea okay so I want you in your creative thinking process as you're generating new ideas is that don't discount the uncomfortable or the hard things because they're there for a reason, right? They are there for a reason. And you can really um, sit with that for a little bit and might find a wonderful way to implement it. Might not be something you end up using, but it might be something wonderful. I remember this kind of actually happened when I first started designing villages. Before that, I was designing a lot of flat, like surface pattern design stuff, because that was my wheelhouse. I knew how to do that very well. When I started going 3D, and you guys, if you are here because you want to become a surface pattern designer, this is where I'm talking about like it becomes a little harder, but it has served me so well once I stopped thinking like a graphic designer which is what I I thought of it as um, back in the day and a surface pattern designer and made the transition and thought no 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 I can be more than that I can be more than these flat things and started really thinking three-dimensionally and started building these things and the first time was really the first time was this uh, like these villages I started building It was out of my comfort zone. It felt 
hard, you guys. It felt so hard. And some of the things I teach in my design suite program on this, where I'm teaching you how to build the 3D stuff, like you guys are doing it and maybe it doesn't feel that hard, but it's because I had to figure out how to do that, you know, on my own. We didn't teach that in graphic design school. I didn't teach that at the university. We taught flat design work. And so when I had to like step out of that comfort zone and figure out how things worked 3D, which is more of an industrial designer type thing to do, it was hard, it was uncomfortable, and it's still not easy for me, okay? I think a lot of people in my program think, oh, all this design work must just come naturally to Karina. And that is not the case. Most of the time, design work that's hard is hard for everybody, okay? It's just who's going to work through it until they figure it out to make it happen, right? So I I love creative thinking. I think creative thinking really leads to great ideas, generating great ideas that then become, for most of us, I hope those of you listening to me, designs that become money-making revenue for you, right? Like design work. And every good design was sparked with a great creative idea. That's just the way it is. So that's why I'm really talking about this today because I want you to be thinking creatively. I want you thinking creatively about this so that you can move forward. Now, if you are interested, I do have an amazing freebie that you can download. You can get that in the description here. Um, the name of that freebie is Seven Tips Nobody Will Tell You About Becoming a Surface Pattern Designer. I like to dispel the myths, and I know you appreciate it as well. So many of you have reached out to me, and you're just grateful that I'm telling you the truth about things. So if you want to grab that, go ahead and download that. I would love for you to understand more about surface pattern design, graphic design, 3D design. I mean, at the end of the day, design is just design, right? Some of the names are sexier than others. And if you like that, you should join me in a design boot camp. It is five days of live talking with me, learning what you need to do strategically to be a paid designer. And that is usually the piece that's missing in the design realm. You can go out there and take lots of amazing digital courses. I think there are some phenomenal ones out there, but they are only going to teach you design work. And many of them won't teach you to have to get to next level design work. And most definitely, I have, I have not seen it will they teach you actually how to get paid as a designer? They might tell you, oh, like go get a contract and they might explain some of those things with it. I am telling you guys right now, 99% of those designers are not getting contracts. Contracts are hard. So if you wanna learn more, come to a design bootcamp. I can't wait to talk to you about it and dispel those myths, but also really teach you how to make money, which is huge. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me and I will talk to you soon. Hey, did you know that you can visit me at makeanddesign.com to learn more about this podcast and join my VIP group for weekly freebies? I can't wait to see you there.